Greetings, everybody. It is the Doctor. Welcome back to Let's Play Star Trek Online in 2015 Free to Play Edition. So, in the last video, I spent a lot of time customizing our character on ground and space. I got all our bridge officer powers set for ground and space. I have geared them up as appropriately as I can at this stage of the game. I'm only Lieutenant Six. I set my skill points. I've done everything I can and we're ready to go. But before we jump into the first mission, I did say that I was going to customize some outfits and I have found out a little bit of information about the outfit options in free to play. So I thought I would go ahead and share those with you first before we begin the mission. If you're curious what types of outfits are available for free to play, and what types you need to spend Zen on, because that's been a question. So go to the tailor, and if you go to actually modify your costume and then go to uniform, this is where it will tell you what everything is going to cost, or what, what things are free and what things are going to cost. So you'd pick uniform jacket loose. If you pick uniform jacket tight, what happens is all you get is this option called the original series uniform. Um, unfortunately, that also costs Zen. That is a medical uniform, and that's all you can get under the tight jacket. But if you go to loose jacket, there are a lot of options, and as you will see, most of them cost Zen. There are not that many free options. You get Antares 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 free. But if you want the open version of the Antares, you do need to spend Zen. You also have to spend Zen for the new Intel outfits. Uh, you do get Sierra 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, but again, if you want the open version of Sierra, you're going to pay Zen. You have to pay Zen for all good things uniform, the Bajoran uniform, the Counselor, all Deep Space Nine, all Enterprise, all Jupiter outfits, all motion picture outfits. Of course, you get Odyssey free. You have to spend for the racing uniform, Section 31, 7 of 9, Starfleet Academy, the Terran uniforms, the Next Generation film. Surprisingly, you do get that one free, but the film open or the Next Generation Season 1 or the Next Generation series, you also have to spend Zen. You have to spend Zen on the original series, the original series Loose, Series Nurse, Khan, uh, TNG Command Variant, Toss Dress Uniforms, and T'Pol. And then, of course, the Shirt Simple is free. So this is what you get on Free to Play is the Shirt Simple, Next Generation Film, Odyssey, and then Sierra 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then Antares 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Everything else is Zen. So yeah, a ton of Zen has to be spent for sure uh, if you are on Free to Play and you want a lot of costume options. Uh, also, you don't get many slots. As you can see, I've got two slots filled and I only have one additional outfit slot available to me. So at this point, also very limited on costume option slots. So just know that that's there and that's what's going to happen. Rename that back there. So what I have is two uh, uniforms here. I've got an off-duty uniform and then a uh, the Odyssey uniform. So here's my off-duty outfit, just the shirt simple, just to wear when I'm not, you know, doing anything duty-wise. And then I can change, now that I'm fixing to do the first mission, to our Odyssey uniform, Odyssey uniform. You will also notice I did change her hair color here. I decided to go with the white after all. I liked it. I uh, tried it and you know what? I actually prefer the white. So I'm going to keep her with white hair for right now. Uh, I also changed her face a little bit, so her face changed as well. So if she looks a little bit different from the last two videos, um, that is why she got a face change. <laughs> but you can do that in the 25th century, and it's quite easy. Now let's do the first mission, Stranded in Space. Lieutenant, I've received a report that there is a Bolian freighter that is overdue arriving at Earth's space dock. It may need assistance. Please talk to Malcolm Sissel in the shipyard. He will have more information about the missing vessel. So we need to talk to Malcolm Sissel in the shipyard, and we will get skill points, expertise, dilithium, and Azura personal comm code, energy dampening armor, shield array, and a field stabilizing warp core. So like I said, a ton of things here just with the first mission. 
Uh, so the way I'm going to, the format that I'm going to do for all of these videos from here on out is that every video will be a complete mission. So that mission could take 20 minutes, that mission could take an hour. I don't know. But I'm going to record the entire mission for each video. Also, I will be looking at the gear rewards that you get at the end of each mission at the end of each mission after we finish it. And I will spend a little time putting that gear on our character and utilizing that gear so that in the next mission, the next video, we are ready to go and have a, um, an up-to-date character who has all the latest gear and is prepared for all the latest combat. Malcolm Sissel. Greetings, Lieutenant. So you're here to talk about the missing freighter, huh? We haven't had a communique from the USS or from the SS Azura in more than 20 hours. Dana Brott is an experienced captain and the daughter of a former Starfleet officer. It's not like her to be out of contact. It would be real help if you could go out to sector space and find the Azura. I've already transmitted the ship's last known coordinates to your con officer. Good luck. When you are ready to return to your ship, click the beam to ship button in the upper left corner of your minimap. Good. So let's go to sector space and go to the SS Zura. Azura. So as we already know from the last video, I spent a lot of time here in space setting up my ship, so there is not anything that I need to do. Uh, we are ready to go. We are ready for space combat. We are combat ready. Combat hardened, combat ready. My friends sacrificed so much to secure peace with the Klingons. I bear the responsibility for the consequences to him and his crew, a thought that troubles me to this day. The hope was that this alliance would last forever. It did not. The Klingons have chosen war. The Federation is doing its utmost to protect its borders and the billions of innocents who call this space home. But I fear that this conflict may be our undoing. Rest in peace, Leonard Nimoy. Yes, he did voice this sector block. Well, they used to be sector blocks, but now they're not really like that anymore. But anyway, that was nice hearing his voice. A little introduction to Star Trek Online there. I love it. So as you can see, when you bring up the map, all you have to do is click on where you want to go and plot a course to it, auto travel, and your ship will go there. Now we're traveling very slow because we are only Lieutenant 6 right now, warp 5. So oh yeah, very slow. But we are we are there now. Too many ships in range. This is Dana Bratz of the Transport SS Azura. Please help. Warp core containment field down. Radiation flooding ship. Communications and life support failing. Cannot eject warp core. Need immediate evacuation and assistance. Please help. So we are the Federation. We come to your distress call because we answer distress calls. Rescue the SS Azura. To any ships in range, this is Dana Brat of the transport SS Azura. Please help, we're being pursued by Orion Raiders. Crew injured, taking heavy fire, dropping out of warp near your coordinates. Need immediate evacuation and assistance. Okay, we gotta save the ship. Save the day. Okay, before we, let's see, sir, hold on a second. Sir, sensors are picking up several light attack craft on an intercept course. We will need to deal with them before we can render aid to the SS Azura. Defeat the Orion Raiders threatening the Azura. Full power to shield, helm, take us in range. So this is going to teach us combat here. Yeah, um, particles for, um, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. 
Let's delete these uh, Orions. Delete them. I mean, <laughs> destroy them. Well, let's delete them too. Oh, uh, where is my mer brain? Brain, where are you today? Did you come with me or did you uh, decide to uh, stay behind? Okay, that was our first foray into battle, and as you can see, because I spent the time to uh, work on my ship here in space, I was ready for that. Uh, I was able to use my powers, I was uh, on auto fire, I had everything on auto fire, and I had full, uh, full power to attack. Now, what I was saying about these particles uh, is that these are used for R&D. These are used to craft items. I have never been a big crafter. In fact, I really haven't dabbled into it at all. But, but for the first time ever, because I am on the free-to-play edition of this game and it is so hard to get things uh, without spending Zen, and I remember I'm not going to spend a dime on this game. I'm going to choose not to. Uh, crafting might actually help me. Being able to craft things and craft my own items might be actually able to help me here in this free-to-play version. So I am going to do the crafting. I will start up the crafting. When it opens up, uh, we, will, we will start the process. And uh, maybe that will help me throughout the, uh, throughout the run-through here. Now before we save the Azura, there's something you can do here. If you fly through this donut asteroid, I think there's an accolade. Check this out. Ah, uh, there we go. You flew through the hole of the large asteroid. Accolade complete mining survey. So that's just a little hidden hidden accolade there most people don't know about. Now let's save the Azura. Warning. Ship is under attack. Target's shields have failed. Man, it is painful being on the starter ship, gotta say. <laughs> Absolutely painful. It's been so long since I've played this mission as a uh, lieutenant character. Scan the Azura. Captain, I'm detecting elevated radiation levels on the Azura. I have alerted the transporter chief of the situation. She can brief you before you beam over to the Azura. And see, all my away team are ready to go, and I know they're geared up because I have geared them up as much as possible. And look, she's already healing herself. <laughs> Captain, I've concerned about the radiation on the Azura. She might have some damage to the warp core, but our sensors can't pick up enough to determine exactly what you'll find over there. I'm sure I can send you and the away team to the ship safely. But getting you back might be a problem until the Azura's critical damage is repaired. Step on the transporter pad when you're ready to go. Excellent. Beam out. See, everybody's got a nice weapon on their back because I put that on there. We're all ready for combat, which I know we're going to uh, encounter. Sir, I'm picking up multiple life signs. Some of them are the Azura's captain's crew and the rest are Orion's. Plasma leaks are blocking our path to survivors. We will need to use the consoles to safely vent the plasma. Shut down the plasma leaks. Um, now, like I said in the in every video so far, loot everything. It's the only way to earn energy credits. If you loot everything and then sell it, like see, here's a loot crate right here. Open container and we're going to get loots. And let's see what we get. We get a Klingon Targ Milk and a small Hypo. You know what? It ain't much, but I can go back to ESD and sell it, and I'll have more energy credits. And that's just what you do, so loot everything. I cannot emphasize that enough. So 
Scan crew member. The crew member is critically injured and you do not have the training needed to assist them. Science career is required to complete this task. Well, poor guy, he's gonna die. Just cause I'm not a science officer. Again, look for crates or anything glowing and loot them. That's the word of the day, by the way, is loot. Can you spell loot? L-O-O-T. Can you say loot? Repeat with me, loot. All right, optic scan, grenade. Actually, they were already dead before I even did that. <laughs> See, that is what equipping your bridge officer's well does for you. I, I didn't even have time to throw my torpedo and they were already dead. Thank you, bridge officers. You are very well equipped. Look, they took care of that that guy. Nice. Okay, bypass the plasma. Dingy majig. See if there's anything to loot, and there is a, uh, a gas I will take. This will help me uh, when I do the crafting. Here's a loot. We will take it. Container. There we go. Look at all those things we got. Small hypo, large power cell. Again, energy credits, that's the way I look at it. Everything that piles up there is an energy credit for me. And that's going to help me buy things. Man, fried him. So again, remember I am using the Target Optics 1. That is a tactical officer's best friend. You get it from the start, you'll have it to the end. So just can use it all the time. It'll give you more damage. And critical severity and critical chance. So very good stuff. Nothing else in here and we move on. Scanning the warp core, Captain. Catastrophic failure of antimatter containment. Warp core breach is imminent. Captain, unless the breach is contained, the Azura will be destroyed. Let's talk to Brat. We hit an Orion ambush on our way to K7. We lost our weapons almost immediately, and then we took a direct hit near engineering. Our warp engine's magnetic antimatter containment field failed. We had no choice but to drop shields and use the power to try to stabilize the containment field. As soon as the shields were down, Orions boarded the ship. I'll never let those green pirates have the Azura. Please take my crew to safety. I'll keep trying to stabilize the warp core. If I'm lucky, I can buy you some time. Escort the Azura crew members to the cargo bay. Um, I'll help your crew. Uh, but before we do that, let us try to stabilize the warp core. Scan warp core. Containment on the warp core is failing, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. You need to get your away team and the survivors off the ship. So if you're engineering, this is the engineering task. But I am not engineering, so I can't stop the warp core. I am only tactical. So let's, um, actually, let's scan this first. So I didn't see that. Let's take it. Okay, and nothing else in here. Let's move on. And we've got, what do we got? We got, we got enemies, we got Orions. Some missions have hidden accolades you can earn for your character. For this mission, we have put the accolade on your mission tracker. Future missions may require you to uncover these on your own. And so right here, I can use my tactical career option to operate this console. When you were in the Academy, you studied mission reports from the USS Archer. In one instance, crew of the Archer reconfigured a plasma conduit and used it to disable a group of Klingons who had boarded their vessel. You might be able to do something similar. I guess I might. And I did. And that has to be very painful. Awesome, and I got an accolade, tactical thinking. Now we can take out the rest. 
do my target optics and fire. Check that out. I just love it. I love how powerful we are even at uh, just the start of this game. Haven't even done much. Already taken down the Orions like they were nothing. Go to the transporter room. We'll be right behind you. Scanning. I don't know what I'm scanning, but I'm scanning something. Away team to enter on, but a chief, are you ready to transport? The Azura's radiation levels are returning to normal. The survivors of the Azura's crew are on the transporter pad. We don't have much time. Get these people off the ship now! How about get me off the ship if it's going to explode? <laughs> Let's do that. Why wasn't I on the transporter pad with them? Somebody tell me that, please. Give me an explanation why I just transported two people to safety and I didn't even put my own away team and myself on there. I was like five feet away from it. It wouldn't have taken long. All right, sensors detect more Orion ships on the way, Captain. We need you back on the bridge. Yeah, well, I'd love to be, but I'm on an exploding ship, so I'll just um, be here then. Why don't you get me off the ship? Okay, now we can beam out. All that time, it could have exploded. Just saying. Speak to the transporter chief. There are more Orion ships inbound, Captain. We need you back on the bridge right away. Well then, let's do that. What are we waiting for? Captain, incoming message from the Orions, putting it on screen. Leave now. If you know what's good for you, Starfleet, we're taking the ship, her crew, and her cargo. The Azura and her crew are under Starfleet's protection. So, uh, I will say no to that. Warning. Ship is under attack. Target's shield has failed. Ah, the big one. Let's get rid of that interceptor. These interceptors are nuts. I hate them. Target shields have failed. Okay, now let's come back around. And what I want to do is I want to do a thingy. I want to uh, flip around here. Come on, flip around. And I'm going to do a drain shield and then hit him with a torpedo high yield. Nice! Projectiles in motion. Your ship has already dealt 100,000 torpedo damage. Now again, take items. We want to take all these items. Because we've got to, to, to loot everything, remember. Loot everything. Captain, we need you to get within range and try to get a transport lock on Captain Brotz. Get us in range. Um, transport Brotz. Attempting to get a transport lock on Captain Brotz, sir. Boosting containment. Boosting. Boosting. And explode. We have our captain right in the nick of time. Um, all right. Captain, Brat is all is safely aboard, sir, and just in time, too. We got her just before the ship exploded. Captain Brat has requested that we take her and her crew to sector space. Starfleet will get them home from there. She said she would be happy to speak with you if you wish. Okay. Uh, I want to scan this gas. Now, I don't think 
that, yeah, the R&D is not open to us yet because it opens with the duty officer system, and that is at level Lieutenant Commander 11. So we look forward to that at that point. Let's speak to Commander uh, Captain Broad, excuse me, and see what she says. You saved my crew, Lieutenant. I'll tell you whatever I can. Okay, what was the Azura's mission? The Azura was a transport ship, best in the quadrant. Mostly I hauled medical supplies or farming equipment, but I had room in the cargo base for a little of everything. I have one consumer who is just crazy for Tranya. I don't save the galaxy on a regular basis like you Starfleet types do, but hauling cargo is a good way to make a living. I'm helping people in my own way. Alright, tell me about the Orions. They're thieves, pirates, and a whole lot of trouble if you ask me. Raiders have always been in a danger to ships like these. Uh, ships like mine, but the problem has gotten worse since the Orions allied with the Klingons. Now they think they can do anything to anyone. Someone needs to put a stop to these raids. Well, what happened to the Azura? We have been having trouble with the warp core for a few days. I was hoping I could make it to the closest star base, but when the containment field started to collapse, I used every bit of power we had to help stabilize it. The minute I rerouted power from the shields to the containment field, the Orions were there. For all I know, they detected I was in trouble and were waiting for the right time to pounce. What will you do now? Go back to Belaris for a few weeks, I suppose. I have enough latinum saved us to get me back to uh, my feet. As soon as I can get another ship, I'll be doing transport runs again. I have customers waiting. Excellent. Anything else around here? That is a no, so let's depart. And that concludes Stranded in Space. We saved Captain Brutz. Now, like I said, I am going to use the end of the missions here to spend a little bit of time to use the gear and things I've collected. Let's hail Starfleet and turn this in. Well done, Lieutenant. You saved that crew just in time. And we're going to get all these things, so let's talk Congratulations, about Congratulations, Lieutenant. And already it has leveled me now to Lieutenant 8. Lieutenant 8 is where we are. We went from six to eight. That's a nice leap. We skipped seven, apparently. Um, now, you'll notice something else came up where it said Lieutenant's Ability 3. Now, what those are, are these are active powers that you get in space and ground as you level up through the game. In order to use these powers, you must put the power on your hotbar. If you don't, you're wasting the power. You're not using it. So at Lieutenant 7, you will see my tactical power I got is called Attack Pattern Alpha. That came with being Lieutenant 7. I actually skipped over 7 and went straight to 8, so I also got a Bridge Officer awarded to me at level 8. But this Attack Pattern Alpha is another useful feature that will help you, and this is a space ability. Let's go back to Earth, and I will show you now what all that means. Let's just transwarp to Earth, and uh, I'll uh, equip. The, uh, I'll use this. I want to show you this ability because this is going to be helpful in uh, every space mission that we do, every space uh, combat from here on out. Just like target optics is important for ground on a tactical officer, so is the attack pattern alpha. And in fact, you will see it already put an icon on my hotbar for me. Now, if it didn't. You would need to go up here to a attack pattern alpha and make sure you bring that power down to your space bar. I didn't mean to activate it yet. What I wanted to do is move it to here. And I didn't mean to get rid of that, but I accidentally did. I'll talk about that too in a second. Where are you again? Call trade freighter. Put that here. Okay. So again, just make sure you drag the power from your skills here into your bar. Make sure you have them, else you're not going to be able to use that power. So what is Attack Pattern Alpha now that I have this ability? This is basically a damage, crit, and turn buff. So again, we're talking about buffs and debuffs, you know, how those are important to tactical characters. Well, this one is a buff. This one is going to buff you, yourself, your ship us in space. This is going to give me right now at this level, this is only level one, this is going to give me a plus 20% all damage for 30 seconds. That means I hit this thing and for 20 seconds I'm doing 20% more damage out of my ship. Holy crap, that's just flat out raw damage. Also, 
I get a 2% critical chance increase for 30 seconds. I also get a 20% critical severity increase for 30 seconds. And I get a 50% flight turn rate for 30 seconds. That means my, um, my turn rate of my ship is actually increased by 50% for, um, for, that, for that amount of time. I'll show you what that is all about here. We'll get out here away from these other ships coming in so I can demonstrate this ability. But basically, when I hit it, number one, it's going to increase my crit severity and crit chance, but it's also going to increase my flight turn rate. So here I am turning. I hit it. Now I'm turning faster. It doesn't look like it so much on this ship because this is just a slow ship anyway. But I am turning 50% faster. You can see that in the turn rate. Or you should be able to see that. 18.6 degrees. As this goes away, you'll see that go back down to 14, I think it was. So we'll just wait for a second here, and that should go back down to 14. When this dies off. Yep, 14. So there you go. See, it was actually affecting my turn rate. And it will actually affect your damage and everything else. So... One way you can see what damage is to hover over this, for example. I am, we'll wait till this cools down. But this beam is doing 283 DPS and 353 phaser damage. So what's going to happen is when I hit this attack pattern alpha ability, this phaser beam should now be doing more DPS and more phaser damage. So we'll wait for that to cool down and I'll show you that. While that's cooling down, I will go over this other thing we just got. The Azura Personal Com Code, this was a reward from the mission we just did. This calls in a trade freighter while you're in sector space, basically calls in the SS Azura. All that means is that anywhere in sector space we can call the Azura where we can access uh, things to like sell stuff or buy stuff, commodities or things we might need. It's basically a trading post in space. Just think of it that way. If you need to sell a lot of stuff and you don't want to go all the way back to our space dock, you can call the SS Azura and use it as a trading post. So that's all, excuse me, that's all that means. You got to keep it in your inventory, put the icon down here, and you can call the trade freighter at any time. You get a mail, a bank, a vendor, and an exchange access. So you also do get access to the exchange, which is quite, quite useful out there in sector space. So that is a useful thing to have if you're a low-level ship and you're not able to travel very fast. Uh, this trade freighter will help you. Okay, now remember, we are here at 283 DPS, 353 phaser damage. I hit this. We are now at 339 DPS instead of 283 and 425 phaser damage. See how that does increase our damage that our weapons do. Very useful, especially on this starter ship, which doesn't do a lot of damage anyway. Using this attack pattern alpha is going to greatly help me. Now remember, in the previous video, I talked about the skill points of Starship Weapon Training. I mean, excuse me, of Starship Attack Patterns. This Attack Pattern Alpha will also be buffed by this ability, which I have not put any, any points into. But if I did, it'll be even more. And I will, because I will be using Attack Patterns on this character. This is a tactical character. Attack Patterns are a thing. And you start with Attack Pattern Alpha. So I could put some skill point right now into that, but I think I want to finish weapon proficiency first. So there we go, let's do that. I have one more one more position on weapon proficiency to do. I'll wait. I want to fill that. Once I fill that, maybe then I'll start putting some into attack pattern. But that is my ultimate goal, is I will put some into it. I will put, I will max out attack pattern. And then that will help my attack pattern alpha even more. Right now it's plus 20%. It'll be even higher. It's going to be even higher. Uh, so that's cool. That is something to keep in mind. It all connects together, you know, the attack pattern alpha helps your weapon damage, the skill points helps you attack pattern alpha, it all connects. What else did we get? We got a couple of interesting things too from this mission I want to definitely put on my ship while we're here. We got a new warp core. The warp core I'm using right now is just a standard matter antimatter warp core. There's nothing fancy about it at all, but this new one is called a Field Stabilizing Warp Core Mark II, and it's got a modifier called Koi, which is coil, I guess. Um, it is going to give us plus 2.5 additional shield power, 
and a plus five maximum shield power and a maximum warp factor of 5.6 so we'll go a little bit faster in sector space now this does increase the uh, driver coil so yeah that's uh, the driver coil that's improving there so basically a little bit faster sector space travel and full impulse travel so you'll see my power level right now for shields is 50 that should go up when I add this warp core 53 there we go now I have a higher shield power and I got a little bit faster sector space travel so that is useful that is useful it's gonna give me a little it's gonna be just a little bit better it's a mark II uncommon so it's the best I can do right now at this level so there we go instantly my ship is now upgraded also I got a new shield this is shield array mark II with a, a disruptor Resistance. Maximum shield capacity is 2750. Remember, the shield on this one I have is 2500. So this is definitely a much better shield than what I'm using now. It's got a higher shield regeneration too. Now I have, instead of 2500, I got 2750. So instantly, I now have better shields. Um, I also got... I also got another impulse engine. Check this out. I got a Mark II impulse engine. So this will upgrade me to a little bit higher flight speed, not much, and a little bit higher all power to engines. And uh, compared to what I'm using now, it's the same type of engine. It even has the same modifier turn, except it's Mark II instead of Mark I. So yeah, heck yeah, I'm going to upgrade to that. Now I got a better engine. Um, this I'll sell, this I'll sell, this I'll sell, this I'll sell. Obviously, I'm not an engineer. I don't need an engineering kit. But I did get an Energy Dampening Armor Mark II Physical. This gives me a plus 17.3 Kinetic Damage Resistance and an All Energy Damage Resistance and a Kinetic and Physical Damage Resistance. It's better than the one I'm using now, which is standard armor. So what I will do, you see, look at those differences there. I will take this, put this on myself. Now I have a better armor. And now what I'll do is I will put this on one of the characters that didn't have an armor, and now at least they have an armor. So instantly, Tavrel is better, and I am now better with my armor. I have a much better armor. That's going to be real nice. And then the Andromeda is better with a better shield, a better engine, a better warp core. Instantly. Just instantly. So this mission paid off a lot. So now the, the next thing to do, I have gone so far away from our space dock. The next thing to do is to go to our space dock and now sell these things. Remember I said that, you know, to earn energy credits, that's what you do. You loot everything and then you sell it. So right now I'm at 99 energy credits and we'll see what that comes up to when I um, turn these in. Another thing we gain from doing missions is dilithium. I have a 384 ore that I can refine. And um, I think I'm going to do that so that we have refined dilithium we can start using. There we go. I got 384 defi refined. Now I have a limit. I only ha I can only refine up to 8,000 dilithium a day. Now we're not going to use it yet. We're not far enough in the game where it's beneficial to us. But in the future it will be. So we'll go ahead and start collecting it now. And then we can use it in the future to buy things. So let's go to my favorite place and sell. Sell the Targ milk, small hypos, power, power cell, the engineering kit, these things which I'm not using. And that's it. Now, look what I got. 1,951. Now I can afford to buy an armor for uh, Zarva. So I'm going to go do that right now because I've got the energy credits and uh, that, will, that will mean all my characters now have a standard body armor. That will be useful. So let's do personnel equipment. Personal armor. We'll just do a common one right now. We'll just do the standard one, 250 energy credits. Very cheap. I'll still have plenty left, but at least now 
Um, everybody has a body armor, everybody has a shield, everybody has a weapon. Colas, you don't have a body armor. Why don't you? Why doesn't Colas have a body armor? I don't know. Well, let's give him a body armor, shall we? That's gonna cost 400, but I'm just gonna do it anyway. I got the energy credits. Then everybody will be set. I won't have to worry about him. Okay, so now everybody has an armor, everybody has a shield, everybody has a weapon. I have a better ar armor, a better shield, and a better weapon than everybody, which is normal. My ship is now better. I got a better shield, warp core, and engine. Got the Azura thing ready, and I got my power set down here, and I got my power set in space, so I'm ready for the next mission. I do also now have a new officer because I hit level 8, so I am going to get Elsa Mora, and I get to choose between a human engineering, a Betasoid science, or a Ferengi tactical. I think I'm going to choose the human engineering officer because I would like to have another engineering uh, eventually I'm gonna need another engineering and then eventually I'm gonna need another science too. I got plenty of tactical officers so that's why I'm not gonna do a tactical. Ooh, that was an ugly guy. Okay, so where did it put it though? Wait a minute. So I don't have the space for it but I have another one? Stations. Can I commission? I don't really want this officer, though. I don't need him right now. I'm just going to keep him right now in my candidate field. I'm not going to commission or do anything right now. I'm just going to keep him there. Because I don't really need him. I got all my other bridge officers set, and I'm good with those bridge officers right now. I'm happy with them. And I don't need another one. Because my ship doesn't need any more powers. It's full. And I'm full on ground, so... I'm just going to keep him in the candidate roster. If I need him in the future, he'll be there for me, but... Right now, I don't need him, so I'm just going to leave him alone. And uh, here we are. The next mission will be Diplomatic Orders. I'm going to do that in the uh, next video. Thank you all for watching Stranded in Space, and I hope you uh, got something out of that. We are as updated as we can get. There's nothing else I can do at this moment. So that's where I'm going to leave it. And then we'll do Diplomatic Orders. So thank you for watching, and stay tuned for the next one.